Coming to you from the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains and Dragon House Studios, I'm Michael Bain and this is Trigger, brought to you by Midway USA, just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. And today we're going to talk about a little brother. In this particular case, this is the Arms Corps Rock Island Armory VR82, which is a 20 gauge version of their hugely successful VR80 semi-automatic shotgun. It's interesting about this particular gun is I was talking to Martin Kowasson, who of course is the president of Arms Corps, and you saw some of that interview on Triggered a few weeks back, but the conversation was long. Martin and I hadn't talked in a while, so we had to catch up on a lot of things. And he was talking about how happy he was the way the VR82 came out. And I was kind of like, well, I shot the VR80 in three gun. I really like it a lot. And he goes, you'll like the VR82 better. And I'm like, I don't know, Martin. And he goes, let me send you one. And you shoot it, and you tell me what you think of it. So Martin, I like it a lot. The VR80, to me, was a groundbreaking semi-automatic shotgun. Of course, it's made in, made in Turkey. And of course, in Turkey, they've been making guns pretty much since there were guns. It uses standard AR patterns. There's been a lot of Turkish AR-based shotguns out there, and a lot of them, um, to use a really highly technical term, were crap. But Martin spent time in Turkey, he spent time working on the VR-80, and it came out really well. One of the things that I pointed out when we tested the, the VR-80 the first time was it didn't shake, rattle, and roll like a lot of those shotguns I found. And still, at a 699 MSRP on the VR-80, it had a significant effect on 3-gun because a lot of people found that 3-gun was a spectacular pain in the butt because of loading a tube shotgun with a tube magazine. You had to learn all these really weird things that basically are of no consequence to you at all unless you're shooting 3-gun or you happen to be John Wick. Arms Corps sort of went back to the table on the VR-82. And let me explain to you why. The, the VR-80 is a lot of things, but it's not svelte. It's about eight and a quarter pounds, uh, adds up a little to about 950 when it's, when it's loaded and maybe even a little more with some accessories on it. So they focused on lightening up the 20 gauge. And they actually were able to take a half pound off of it, but I can tell you that it feels like a lot more. The first thing I noticed in handling this gun was how easily it handled. And I, I did a test. My sweetie shot three gun, and the first time she shot my VR-80, she goes, it's heavy. So I gave her this gun, and she said, gosh, it's light. So that was my scientific test. It feels light. Among other things, you can see the lightning cuts here in the magazine well. You can see them here in the shroud. The other thing that makes this gun handle well is it's got a little thinner profile. It's svelte, if you will. You know, this width, everything here is just a little bit thinner. And that translates into a performance boost in handling the gun. Uh, I was really impressed the first time I handled it, which uh, I didn't expect to be. I do like the VR80. I've, I've always been a 12-gauge guy, right? And why would you be a 12-gauge guy? Because typically what people think is they go, well, 20-gauge? 20-gauge is smaller than 12. So it must recoil less. Well, no, it doesn't, as a matter of fact. Um, and the reason is there's such a variety of 12-gauge shells out there, all the way from feather light, super light target loads, up to essentially, I don't know, loads that would hammer a velociraptor into the ground. In fact, one of the things that Rock Island Armory Arms Corps had suggested is make sure you break these guns in. And so when I got my VR-80, I broke it in with Russian buckshot, Rus Russian triple aught buckshot, which is just brutal. Uh, somehow I ended up with a case of Russian buckshot. But I shot a bunch of rounds through it, and it settled right in. When you go to a 20 gauge then, if you're used to 12 gauge and you're used to this huge variety of shotgun shells, well at least that's how it used to be <laughs> in the old days, 2019, you know, crazy times, you're not going to find that in 20. There's a substantially reduced number of shells in 20. 
However, there's still a sufficient number of shells that you can use it for hunting, you can use it for three gun, you can use it for home defense. And those are kind of the three applications that you're going to see for it. Another thing, it's an 18 inch barrel instead of a 20 inch barrel. To me, this is a super little gun. I could see shooting this gun in three gun. Even though there's a reduced number of shells, you're going to find the ones that you need, which is field loads of various kinds. You're going to be able to find buckshot and you're going to be able to find slugs. So basically, if you want to use the gun as a hunting gun, and by the way, you can get a, a two round magazine. So you got two plus one, so you're safe in states that mandate three rounds, no more than three rounds hunting. Or you've got it for three gun if you want to. I don't, I've never seen a particular difference in three gun between a 12 gauge and a 20 gauge. You're going to want to stay with us. I want to talk about this gun a little bit more, and I'm going to introduce you to another friend of mine from TACCON 2021. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. It's true. You can't avoid the struggle. It's coming. But you can control your precision. It's time to put it all on the line. Because with Crimson Trace Optics, failure is not an option. I wanted to come back and show you my VR80 that I have shot in 3-gun. You'll notice I've changed out the buttstock to a typical AR buttstock. This is, uh, I believe, adaptive tactical because it's got a big fat recoil pad on it. Changed out the pistol grip. I run it with a red dot. And you can see the big fat magazine well that's essentially for three gun, it's a trick thing. It makes it just a little bit easier to pull those great big fat magazines and stuff them in. But it's been a rock solid gun. And I would expect the 20 gauge version to also be rock solid. In terms of magazine capacity, it comes with the 20 gauge of ERA 82, comes with two five round magazines. It also comes with three chokes. It uses the mobile choke system. You can find 10 round magazines for this gun right now. I did a check on the internet and they're, they're actually available and they're actually available at a very reasonable price, $29.95. I have read that there are 20 round magazines for this shotgun. I have not been able to find them. If they exist, I'll keep looking. I can't have them in Colorado anyway. The other thing you want to look for if you decide you want to go to this 20 gauge gun is Keep checking at Taylor Freelance, Robin Taylor's company. He makes a great extended magazine for the VR80. It adds three rounds. And I would anticipate that he's going to make an extended magazine for this gun as well. This gun did not recoil as much as I expected it to. I found the VR80 to be a beast, even though they're gas-operated shotguns, right? Normally, you say gas-operated shotguns suck off some of the gas, so it's not going to recoil as bad as a pump, say. Well, the VR80 manages to recoil as bad as a pump. I don't know why that is, but everybody I know that shot them says the same thing. This gun, though, I was surprised. I took it out, I started shooting it, and I thought, wow, yeah, I can shoot this thing all day. So I, I'm very impressed with the VR82. Take a look at it in terms of a self-defense shotgun or a competition shotgun, if you will. It's a gun that's, that's going to make it easier for you to run a semi-auto shotgun. I like magazine-fed shotguns because it allows me to stage loads. Say I have a 10-round magazine in here with buckshot in it for home defense, but I have a 5-round magazine with slugs in case somebody tries to drive a garbage truck through my door. Same thing I used in 3-gun. The shot was in the long magazines. The slugs or the buckshot were in 5-round magazines. So, a magazine-fed shotgun gives you the option to do that. Okay, we're going to shoot this a lot more. Um, I'm going to hang on to it for, I think, six months, something like that. Shoot it and see just how much I like it. But remember I told you last week that while I was at TACCON, Tom Givens' TACCON Tactical Conference in Dallas at the Dallas Pistol Club a couple of weeks ago, I did interviews with a lot of the top trainers in the country that I wanted to sprinkle through Triggered. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Chuck Haggard, a good friend of mine. And when you look at Chuck, you think, good grief, that guy looks like one of the villains in a Marvel comic. It's like, oh, I'm Chuck. 
Instead, he's funny. He's one of the greatest guys I've ever met just to hang out with. He also has a 28-year law enforcement career behind him. He is a major tactical trainer in a whole lot of different areas. And one of the things that Chuck does that I think is really impressive is he goes into areas that a lot of times trainers don't touch on. So today Chuck's going to be talking about little guns. Let's take a look. All right, Chuck, your class here is dealing with small pistols. Yes. What, if you could speak to this overall audience who is absolutely crazy for small 9 millimeters, what would you tell them? So my definition of a small pistol would be uh, part of it is the shooter size, and it has to do with gun fit to hand fit. And if I have something like for me, like a Glock 43, uh, something that size, I have to run a modified set of things like reloads and malfunction clearing uh, because what we normally teach for service pistols, things like tap, roll rack to get the gun work, and if we have a malfunction, don't work with those small pistols because you got too much uh, hand and not enough gun to work it uh, with, that, with that procedure. So when people go out and buy a Mini 9, they might not fully understand what they need to do, how their training needs to shift if they're going to handle this small nine and carry it on the street. So, yeah, um, what, a lot of, what a lot of people uh, would learn in like the military or police service, how to handle a duty pistol or a service size pistol or even one of the, we call them compacts, but, uh, you know, the truth be told, like a Glock 19 is still a full-size fighting handgun. You know, a lot of the other compact guns uh, are, are still technically a full-size military police-grade fighting handgun. Uh, so when we get into some of the very, very small guns, particularly uh, some of the pocket guns, 380s, things like that, and then uh, some of the very small guns, like a car PM9, uh, Robar, uh, something like that, um, you can't, you simply, because of the hand size versus the gun size, most people cannot run those the way they would a full-size gun. I've also found that uh, how they're carried, how you establish a grip, and sometimes even what ammunition you choose to load in the gun have to change because of the size of the gun. Oftentimes when people get a small gun, they have an idea that they can conceal it deeper and still be able to get to it. Uh, what would you tell them? It's like, okay, how are you going to carry this gun? You got, I don't care, LCP, you got a 365. How are you going to carry it? And what should they know? So carry mode, any carry mode is going to have uh, pluses and minuses. It's going to have pluses or minuses in concealment, speed of access, how secure the gun is in carry. So it's all going to be weighing the factors that... Uh, that, that you want to, to incorporate into your lifestyle. Uh, I'm a big fan of pocket carry, and pocket carry, if you pre-stage the draw with your hand in the pocket, is super fast. But you realize you're sacrificing if your hand is not in the pocket. When you have to go for the gun, your draw is gonna be much slower than it might be in another carry mode. And then any, any carry mode is gonna have pluses and minuses in uh, concealment and access of the gun. I, I thought that Enigma system that John cooked up is, is interesting. Have you worked with that at all? I have. It's excellent gear. Uh, John is a wizard with holsters. He's got some very good products out there. Uh, the Enigma. I've used personally cobbled together type systems for, for a few years because, uh, frankly, things like gym shorts or board shorts, something you might wear in the summer, uh, are not robust methods of carrying a gun. They're not a good holster platform. So what, uh, what John has done is formalize some of that process some of us have played with over the years into a, a super workable modular system that you can make fit your clothing and your lifestyle and the size of gun that you want to carry. It's a pretty good idea. I mean, it goes a, a huge step beyond the belly band. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a much more workable system uh, to where you can actually kind of shrink that compromise between concealability and speed of access. If you've got it set up correctly, uh, depending on your clothing, you don't give up anything in speed of access and not really anything in concealability. 
This week's trigger is brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. Taurus USA. Design to protect. Rock Island Arms Corps. Solid as a rock. Volkwartzen. Engineering the world's finest rimfire rifles, pistols, and parts. And Franklin Armory. Making some of the most innovative guns in America. Welcome back to Trigger, and let's get back to that interview with Chuck Haggard. In terms of ammunition selection on small guns, what kind of advice would you give? You would go with a different round if you were shooting in a small gun. I, I might, uh, depending, depending on the caliber we're talking about, depending on the particular gun. First thing I want to do is make sure I don't compromise the reliability of the gun. That's always key. The gun needs to go bang. Then I want to make sure that the, the ammo shoots to my sights. From that point, I worry about the potential wound ballistics of the gun, uh, of the ammunition choice. Uh, what I have found is some of the, the really good loads that work out of a service length pistol uh, don't work as well out of a very small gun um, with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a Glock 43 or the, the very short, the, the original uh, SIG P365 uh, barrels of that length. Uh, some very good ammunition out there. Like I will tell you, I've tested a critical duty in nine millimeter as a superb service pistol load that out of the micro guns, the bullet won't mushroom. So if that's what you want, you're going to have to look for a different, different bullet. Uh, I have seen that failure across the board uh, in even ammunition. I, I highly favor gold dots, HSTs, things like that. Uh, so yes, my ammunition selection might vary. In the very small calibers, 32s, 380s, things like that, I'm actually an advocate of a full metal jacket. That, that's really interesting because, you know, the people with 380s are trying desperately to get away from full metal jacket, but you would choose pro the penetration over expansion. I would, always, I would always choose feed reliability and penetration over a theoretical uh, advantage of expanding ammunition. Interesting. Do you think this trend can go on to small pistols? Um, you know, I, it appears to be in, in my time in this business, I have noted, like in my state, we went from a, no way to carry a gun legally, even retired cops, which in other places traditionally could carry af after the job, uh, nobody could carry a gun except active duty law enforcement. And then uh, what we did was we got concealed carry permits that were sort of a, a May issue. Then it was a shall issue. And now we have shall issue and uh, constitutional carry where you don't necessarily require a permit. So it appears over the, the past few decades that it would become uh, more in line with what guys like you and I would think is the way things should be. And in those lifestyle choices, uh, people want guns that are convenient to their lifestyle, to their clothing, to their mode of carry. Um, you know, I can kind of dress like a bum on my own time and, you know, wear jeans and T-shirts and things like that. But uh, let's say I, I was a bank president or a business owner or something like that. Maybe I have to uh, carry a smaller gun that fits my clothing, my lifestyle better. And uh, I think those are very individual choices. And I'm very happy to see that the industry has given us those choices, gear, uh, guns, ammunition, that uh, help good people out with those choices. We're really in the golden age of concealed carry, in my experience. Uh, we have guns that are better than they've ever been. We have ammunition that's better than it's ever been. More widely, uh, you know, more support for those things, uh, holsters, uh, accessories, things like that. This really is, as far as I'm concerned, the good old days uh, for concealed carry. Good, good. And just one other question: Would you take a uh, Would you take a small semi-auto over a small revolver? If you're talking about, say, a pocket gun, a deep concealment gun. So, personally, I still favor the snub for a pocket gun uh, for my needs, my my experience, ammunition selection, things like that. Overall. Uh, I, if it's going in a pocket, it's going to be a snubby for me. But if I'm going to be carrying in other modes, uh, like my, 
my go to the gym gun is a small nine millimeter and a fanny pack. If I am uh, wearing dressed up clothes and I've got a gun at belt level, it's going to be a small nine millimeter uh, uh, of a Glock 43 type size or Glock 43X, 360, SIG 365, something like that. Um, if it's going to be anywhere on my waistline. So uh, for that role, small nine millimeters have supplanted snub revolvers for me. Uh, just in the niche role of pocket carry, I still favor the uh, the snubby myself. You you really stand out from a lot of other instructors who, uh, over the past few years, have talked about pocket carry is the worst thing in the world, and a fanny pack marks you as a ranked beginner. I'm pretty sure you're not a ranked beginner at this point. But so what you're getting at is is if it works, it's good. Uh, we can argue the tactical. You know, uh, almost like, you know, as a version of political correctness, tactical correctness. I've had people tell me, well, you know, if you're not carrying a service pistol and two reloads, then, you know, you're not taking this seriously. Well, how far do we take that? Uh, do I have to go through life with a plate carrier and my carbine at low ready before I'm, you know, I'm not wearing a helmet, so I'm not taking it seriously. Well, I might fall in a pool or a lake, so should I wear a life jacket? You know, I'm not taking water safety seriously. At, at what, you know, we, we still want to live life. We still want to enjoy life. And uh, I will make some sacrifices for that. But then other times, you know, if, uh, if I'm going on vacation, I'm going to be at the beach and I'm going to be wearing board shorts. It is what it is. Uh, I go to the gym, you know, four or five days a week and I'm wearing uh, gym shorts and a t-shirt. I got my micro gun and my fanny pack. That, that's my choice. Excellent. Okay, I hope you picked up some good pointers from Chuck on running little guns, which so many of us do. And I hope you'll take a good look at this Arms Corps VR82 and go, wow, this is a semi-automatic shotgun I really like, especially at an MSRP of 729, 730, somewhere in there. I've already seen it down to 637 when it's available. I'm Michael Bain, of course. This is Triggered. You can find us on michaelbain.tv. You can also find us on YouTube. If you do find us on YouTube, by all means, please push that subscription button. And we will see you next week with a couple of really cool guns that I've already got in-house.